answer. Puzzle number two. Answer. Puzzle number four. Hello SCF kids, this morning I am super excited to introduce my good friend Joby. Joby has started her summer job here at the church with Jenna and I and we are pumped to be able to be here with all of you. Good morning kids, I'm really happy to be here with you today. We are having a super exciting lesson today learning more about the good news that Jesus gives us. Take a seat and get comfy, the fun is just about to begin. Joby, did you hear the good news? What good news? The good news? Like the pizza that's half off down the street. No, not that good news. I mean, that's great news, but I am not talking about that good news. Oh, like um, day camp, July 18th and 22nd? No, that's also really exciting news, but I'm not talking about oh, that. Oh, the chocolate bars that are buy one, get one free <sighs> at the grocery store? Listen, Joby, I'm actually talking about the good news that Jesus gives us. Did you know that he died on the cross for our sins? And if we believe this, then we are rescued from all of our sins. Isn't that awesome? So awesome. I am so excited to learn about this, and it's going to be in our Bible story video today. Jesus' followers in the early church wanted everyone to hear the good news about Jesus. God had kept his promise to send a savior. He sent his own son, Jesus, to earth to rescue sinners. Jesus lived the perfect life we cannot live and died the death we deserve to die. 
on the third day, God raised Jesus from the dead. This good news, the gospel, changes everything. People who love Jesus tell others about him. That's what Paul did. Paul wrote a letter to believers in Rome to tell them that Jesus was the savior they had been waiting for. Paul wrote, I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes. Everyone sins and needs to be rescued. God saves people who believe the good news about Jesus. Because of their faith, God forgives their sins and gives them eternal life. Paul wrote that God showed his love for us by sending his son to die for us. We were sinners, enemies of God, but Jesus died and rose again to make us right with God. Jesus is God's good gift to us. Let's rejoice. Paul reminded the people about the first man, Adam. When Adam sinned, death came into the world. Everyone sinned, so death spread to all people. God sent Jesus into the world to bring us a gift that is greater than Adam's sin. Adam brought death, but Jesus brings life. Adam disobeyed God, but Jesus obeyed him perfectly. Does that mean we can keep on sinning because we are forgiven? Paul said no. no. Jesus sets us free from sin so we can live in a new way that honors him. Because God created everything, he is in charge of everything. Everyone sins or disobeys God. Our sin separates us from God. The good news of the gospel is that God sent his son Jesus to take the punishment we deserve. Everyone who trusts in Jesus will be saved. If you wanted to share the good news of the Bible in one sentence, you could say this. God sent Jesus into the world to rescue sinners. This is good news that Jesus' followers in the early church shared with others. Paul dedicated his life to sharing the gospel, and Jesus calls all believers to share the good news so that people from all over the world might hear and believe. Imagine you are standing on the side of a pool, holding a life jacket, and all you see is somebody in the pool struggling to keep his head above water. What would you do? You would throw him the life jacket. Or if a bridge had collapsed and you saw people driving right towards it, unaware of the danger, what would you do? You would run to them and wave your arms and yell at them to stop and turn around. That is the same type of urgency we should have in telling people about Jesus. Apart from Jesus, we are dead in our sin and will spend eternity separated from God. That is bad news. Paul's letter to the Romans says there is good news for all sinners. Hi there, I'm Pastor Brian and it's time for questions from kids. Today, Faith from Edgewater, Colorado asks, are there really people in the world who have never heard about Jesus? Faith, that is a fantastic question. You know, some of us have grown up in places maybe where there are churches all over the place. Uh, maybe we grew up in the church always hearing about Jesus. And so it's surprising to think that some people may have never in their lives heard about Jesus. But the big answer is that's the case. There are some people in this world who have never heard about Jesus. You know, in today's Bible story, we heard that the good news that God sent Jesus into the world to rescue sinners is available for everybody. And there are over 7.6 billion people in the world today. That's a lot of people. But hear this, more than 40% of that, so almost half of those people live in people groups that we would consider to be called unreached. It means that there are only a small, very small number of people in that group that have heard about Jesus or follow Jesus. So there are many, many people who have never heard about Jesus, but there are also many, many people who have heard about Jesus but do not have trusted in Jesus. So we need 
to think about both. We need to focus on both and love and care about both. We need to send missionaries to remote places where they've never heard about Jesus so they have the chance to hear about him for the first time. But also we need to live on mission here where we live, where there are people all around us who have heard about Jesus but never trusted in Jesus. Because we need to show the love of Jesus to these people. We need to tell them about Jesus. We need to do both because we want them not only to hear about Jesus, but to trust in him so that they can be forgiven their sin and have eternal life with God like we have. So here's a question back for you. What makes you excited or maybe hesitant to share your faith with others? Alright kids, it's time for our memory verse game. So, for this week's memory verse game, we have decided to get some rice. So we have a bucket full of rice here. Jovi is holding it up for you to see. It's yellow. She dyed it this morning just for fun. And in the rice, there is paper clips. Now, what's going to happen is we're going to do three rounds that are 30 seconds long each. Jovi is going to have a blindfold on and she's going to dig through the rice to find as many paper clips as possible. With the paper clips she finds, we are going to set them on the table and the amount she has by the end of the 30 seconds is how many words we will take out of the verse. So like I said, we're going to do three rounds and we are going to begin now. So just put the blindfold in. And the 30 seconds is about to start. Go. Oh, yeah, looks like we got one there. Here, I'll take it from you. Okay. Yes, that is the point. Oh, I can see one, but you just haven't been able to get it. Here? Here? I don't know. I'm just going to have to figure it out. Almost at our time, and she's only gotten one out. And stop. All right, so you can take that up. All right, so Jovi got one paper clip out, which means we're gonna take one word out of the verse. So read it with me, kids. We who are many are one body in Christ and individually members of one another. Romans 12, 15. All right, time for round two. So we're going to restart our timer and Jovi's gonna go again here. And just mix that up a little and start. Man, you're not very good. No. Come on, guys, cheer on. She's trying her best. Well, they're just little, so it's hard to find them. I know, that's the point. You can also try this at home, kids. All you need is paper clips and rice. Pretty straightforward. This is just sad. I feel like I need to help you. Oh. I felt one, I felt it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really bad at this. Yeah, clearly. Oh, stop. All right, so unfortunately, Jovi again only has the one from last round. So we're gonna read it with just the one word taken out again. Here we go, kids. We who are many are one body in Christ and individually members of one another. Romans 12, 15. All right, last time. Let's hope it goes a bit better than last time, but we're cheering you on, Jovi. All right, and start. Oh my goodness, this is the worst. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I found one! I found one. One more, okay, that's two words. It's not that hard, but okay, I but guess I it is. See. Yeah. Far away. Can you give me a hint? Do you see one? I do. It's right there. What? Oh. Oh. Oh, and your time's up. 
Well, that's unfortunate. We're going to read it with two words taken out this time for the two paper clips that Joby found in all of that digging. All right, read it with me, kids. We who are many are one body in Christ and individually members of one another. Romans 12, 15. All right, kids, that was great. Joby did okay. Maybe better next time she tries. You can try this at home and uh, memorize your memory verse for the next video next week. Uh, right now, I just want you all to go grab your Bibles and then meet back here. Now that we all have our Bibles, let's turn to Romans 6.23 and read. For sin pays its wage, death, but God's free gift is eternal life in union with Christ Jesus our Lord. The bad news is that we are all sinners who deserve death. But the good news is that God loves us so much. And God sent Jesus into the world to rescue sinners. Let's sing, kids.
My lighthouse, my lighthouse, shining in the darkness, I will follow you. My lighthouse, my lighthouse, I will trust the promise, you will carry me safe to shore. Because God created everything, He is in charge of everything. Everyone sins or disobeys God. Our sin separates us from God. The good news of the Gospel is that God sent His Son Jesus to take the punishment we deserve. Everyone who trusts in Jesus will be saved. Let's pray, kids. Father God, we come to you aware of our need for forgiveness. Our sin keeps us far from you and lost in the darkness. Thank you for sending your Son, Jesus, to rescue us. You bring us into the light and make us part of your family. You love us so much. Give us boldness to share this good news with the world. Amen.